Welcome to Crucial Conversations. I'm Peter. And I'm Kevin. And this is our wrap-up episode for 2021. I don't even know how many episodes we managed to do this year. D- does it count as a wrap-up, Kevin, if we only did like three to begin with? It's at the end, so... We're at the end, yes. Not, yeah, not a lot of wrapping. So, well, we don't... Neither of us wrap anyways. We're Thankfully. First of all, we're terrible at it. <laughs> Anyways, this is our... We did want to at least get one more episode out for you guys because we've had questions asking, are you still podcasting? Hey, is Crucial Conversation still a thing? And and so on. And so we wanted to assure you that, yes, it is. And so here's our final episode of 2021, and we've got some uh, exciting ideas for what we want to do in 2022 as we... uh, Not reboot, but... (laughs) progress and move forward. So we're going to talk about a passage in John today because we always want to go to scripture first because some of the things we want to do next year, we want to communicate to you and to ourselves, remind ourselves that what we're talking about is actually drawn from scripture and hopefully isn't just our own personal hobby horses, although sometimes that happens too. (laughs) Um, But what we want to do next year, we'll talk about that, but in the context of what Jesus talks about in John 5. So, Kevin, anything you want to add to that? No, let's read John 5. Okay. So, when we look at John 5, we hear Jesus interacting with the Jewish people um, that he's teaching, and they have some, obviously, some questions about what he's been doing and how he is able to do such things, both um, kind of miraculously but also whether or not he's doing them with the authority of God or whether he's kind of against God and all of this and so um, they're offended at him by his actions on the Sabbath they're offended that he seems to be talking in such a way that he's claiming to be someone like God um, so this is the conversation he's having with them and in the middle of John well not the middle at the end of John 5 <laughs> in verse 37 he says this And the Father who sent me has himself borne witness about me. His voice you have never heard. His form you have never seen. Now this is startling. He's not saying this to a bunch of Gentiles. Mm -hmm. He's saying this to Jews, meaning Israelites, meaning the people who have read the Old Testament, the people who are descended from Abraham, And he is saying that the Father's voice they have never heard, and they have never seen the Father. Now, these are people who treasure as their sacred texts the very words of Yahweh spoken to Moses, who had a vision of Yahweh. Now, is he talking to the church leaders here, like the Pharisees, Sadducees, or is this a larger group so that's this gathered is, around at this point? This is part of the issues in, in the Gospel of John, is he doesn't make that distinction very clear usually. So in, in chapter 5, verse 18, it says, this is why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he was not only breaking the Sabbath, the well, way he was healing, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal to God. So Jesus says to them. So that's kind of the issue is it's not clear um, in chapter one, when the Jews send people to to John the Baptist, it's very clear who it is. It's sent from the Pharisees, you know, and they, it will actually list who they are. But in these, in these passages, it's just Jesus talking to the Jews. And then sometimes the Jews who had believed in him or the Jews who were seeking to kill him, those kind of things. So we're not entirely clear on the exact kind of subset of the Jewish people that make us his audience. But but these are the people who are hearing him teach about God, watching him um, in his earthly ministry perform his miracles, and they have some interaction with him because they're, they're offended by what he's doing. Mm-hmm. They're offended by what he's saying, so they've heard what he said. And they're having some kind of interaction with Jesus where he's aware of their um, being upset or frustration that, that they're seeking to kill him. He knows this. So whoever it is he's talking to, they are definitely people who are interested in the things of God. They're interested in Jesus as a religious figure. They're interested in Jesus as a miracle worker. Um, so we don't know exactly who they are, but we do know those kinds of things about them. Part, part, and, of, my, part of my question was, 
mainly because there are some times where Jesus is talking to a specific audience, such yeah. as his disciples. And so we want to be a little, well, we always want to be careful with how we handle the text. But in, in those contexts where we're taking, here's what Jesus said, and then immediately trying to apply it to ourselves and our own lives, it's like, well, okay, let's let's right. be careful how we go about making that hermeneutic, that interpretive move, because he was talking to the disciples, or he was talking to the Pharisees. And so right. this one, it's a, I just wanted to make sure that as we're talking about this, I understood it's a general audience, so well, you still have to be careful hermeneutically what you do with it. But It's a general audience, meaning it's the Jews who have heard him and seen him. So that's, yeah. that's why I was saying these are people who read the Old Testament, who treasure the words of Moses, um, the history of Moses, the story of Moses, the story of the Torah. We know um, at this time, if you're identified as a Jew who's interested in these things, you would certainly be reading that. Even the Samaritans um, treasured the Torah. So so certainly very confrontational words for Jesus to say to this crowd, mm -hmm. um, you have never heard the Father's voice, you've never seen his form. <laughs> um, they would think at least they had through Moses or through right. Abraham or through the prophets. So for Jesus to say this, it really sets up a problem. So then he continues in verse 38 and it says, and you do not have his word abiding in you for you do not believe in the one whom he has sent. So now he's upping the ante saying, not only have you never heard his voice or seen his form, but you don't have his word in you. These are people who are reading the scriptures. He says this in the next verse, mm -hmm. that they're actually reading the scriptures, and yet Jesus says that God's word is not abiding in them. Likely so, also following the Mosaic law. Yes. Living properly as Jews, doing the right things as they're supposed to. Going to synagogue. Keeping um, the feasts. Probably going to Jerusalem. Yeah. Yep, for the feast. All that stuff. Which which is very much the context of Jesus' teaching in the Gospel of John is, is the Jewish feast. Yeah. Okay. So, so then he goes on, he says this. In verse 39, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that bear witness about me. So now he's going to make it very explicit. So you search the scriptures. Now for us, when we read this, who knows what, what most people would think. But when Jesus was saying this, he is specifically referring to the what we would consider the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Okay. So specifically... You have the books of Moses. Nobody questioned that that was scripture. Right. Right. And then you had the prophets. Nobody questioned that Moses and the prophets were scripture. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we say, when we think of prophets, we think of, you know, like the Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and the 12 minor prophets. Well, those were all prophets, but it also, remember in the, in the Jewish and the Hebrew Old Testament, it also included books like Joshua and Judges Hmm. and Samuel and Kings. So those are considered pro prophetic books also. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all of those books he's talking about. And and maybe even the wisdom literature as well. So so you search the Old Testament scriptures, God's word. Psalms as well, right? Psalms would be in the writings. Yeah. So that'd be the, the chief book of the writings. That's the third third aspect of the Old Testament in Hebrew thinking. So, so Jesus is saying you're reading those texts because you think that you have life in them, right? In them you have eternal life. But this is this is the most important thing that he does. He says, and it is they that bear witness about me. And and this is, you know, we've read this passage before, we've talked about it before, but but as we wrap up 2021 and as we look ahead to 2022 and as we as we continue to discuss theology on this podcast or, or when you go to church or mm -hmm. when you go to a Bible study or when you're doing family devotions, uh, these words of Jesus really kind of establish for us how we want to do theology. Is it's not just finding the right text to read. Yeah. Right. It's not just finding the right doctrine to talk about. We really want to make sure that when we're talking about God, we're, do, we're doing so according to God's will, yeah. not our will. And what Jesus is doing is he's saying to the, to the people who hear him here that you're reading the right words as far as the right text goes, but you're not reading those words according to God's will if you're not reading them about Jesus. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so this is the big move is that it's not even right to just say, I believe in the Bible, <laughs> right? A lot of it, well, I'm a, I'm a Bible believing Christian. The um, Bible says that I believe it. Yeah, that settles that's, it. that settles it. Is that the phrase? Yeah, I think that's the phrase. All right. Yeah. So, so Jesus is actually kind of confronting that idea, right? You can, you can read the Bible and still not be living according to the will of God. Mm -hmm. You can read the Bible contrary to God's desire for how you should read it. I, I know somebody who reads the Bible through the entire Bible in a year, every year. And this individual, as far as I know, does not call themselves Christian, um, is not regularly attending a church, isn't doing the visible things you would normally see a Christian doing. Now, they're not necessarily an immoral, you know, profligate individual, but they read and will talk about scripture as literature. And it's right. just, oh, it's just, I get so much out of reading it. And every year I like to read through the entire Bible in one year. I just get so much out of it. Well, they also read through Lord of the Rings every year in the exact same way. Yeah, <laughs> It's like, it's wonderful to read. I get so much out of it and it's just wonderful to read it. And so that that's kind of, they're not even searching scriptures for life. They're just reading the scriptures because and, and i think a lot of this i mean yeah it's it's we i think we all know people like that 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 might have a very close association with scripture for some reason mm -hmm. I, well i really like the bible because it helps me think this or it helps me do this and and we're not we're not discounting reading scripture we certainly encourage everyone to read the bible every day mm -hmm. um, as much as we can and, and spend time in church obviously every sunday and, and do the family devotions all that's very good but the, the point that we want to continue to, to focus on is that all of that is done through Christ, never apart from him. Mm -hmm. And the goal of scripture reading is really to ask, how does this teach me about Jesus? How does this get me to the cross of Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. How is all of this written to show me Jesus? Because if we want to read scripture according to the will of God, we want to read it focused on Christ because that is the point, God's point in the revelation mm -hmm. of scripture is to show us Jesus. And, and this is the real point is that, is that Jesus is saying, the father who sent me, see it's, it's his action to send Jesus as the testimony of who God truly is. Mm -hmm. So we want to take that very seriously. Now, this is a big issue. I, you know me. I, I like to ask people, what's your favorite Bible verse? You know, I, I like to I send out a daily Bible verse for some of my friends every day. Um, a daily verse every day. That's good. Yeah, yeah. And that's not redundant and repetitive not at, all. at all. So, but a lot of times I wonder, you know, is if you read just this verse, does it draw you to Christ or would it encourage us to see the Bible as kind of a self-help book? Mm-hmm. That helps me feel better about things, or just individual proverbs, right? That, that you know, teach that me how to verse live. Gets me through the day today, right. yeah, just on and, its own. And I think there there is a danger in that, where sometimes the Bible can kind of be our religious book that really has nothing to do with God's action in Christ to save us. Mm. And this is where John five and other texts in the scriptures. You think of of First Corinthians chapter one, where where Paul says, we've preached Christ crucified, you know? Yeah. Stumbling block. Yep. <laughs> Foolishness. Yep. Yep. You know, but, but in reality, it's the power of God and the wisdom of God for salvation. And, and this is, you know, Romans one, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes. Um, it's so, so when you read the new Testament, it's pretty clear that the new Testament writers, as they went back and reread the old Testament in light of the Holy Spirit's teaching them who Jesus is, they learn to read the Old Testament with a Christocentric mm -hmm. view of it, right? They, yeah. they believe that it was all about Jesus, to be totally blunt. Yeah. And they go back and they read it and they're like, okay, yes, it was true. It actually happened. There actually was an exodus out of Egypt. There was a sacrificial system and a tabernacle and a temple and a monarchy and mm -hmm. an exile, a double exile. You know, all these things actually historically happened. They're not discounting that. They're saying, but all of this was actually God moving us toward a greater revelation of his greater action to save. We actually discussed this in Bible study at church yesterday. Uh, Pastor Bierman was going through Philippians 3 
And in the context there, we're talking about the circumcision. And mm-hmm. Paul versus the circumcision party went into Galatians as well, because uh, that's a big issue there. And yeah. that was that was kind of his whole thing is like, look, circumcision was the sign. Yeah. Now Jesus is actually here. You don't need to go back to the right. thing that was pointing you to Jesus. You have Jesus. And so we, we've gone through that in Bible study here at work too, when the entire book of Hebrews, right. you know, the whole, yeah, so the Jesus whole is better. It's better. Don't uh, go which, back. That'll become a Bible in five pretty quick. That's yeah. a pretty easy That's right. Jesus is better. <laughs> theme for Bible in five. <laughs> Whatever you want to list from the Old Testament, he's better. Yeah. Yeah. You want to list from the New Testament? He's better. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just that simple. And, and what you just said is so important is because, um, these signs were actually given by God for good things. Mm-hmm. It's not that we're saying God messed up in the old. I mean, that's Jesus doesn't Jesus doesn't say in, in John five, why are you reading the Old Testament? That's useless. Oops. Throw it away. <laughs> he doesn't say that. Yeah. What he says is when you read the Word of God, God desires for you to read that about me. Mm-hmm. And this is the offense of the gospel. Is that we are actually saying that it is God's will to read the entire scripture in light of Christ. Yeah. And no other way. Well, there, there's a reason that we keep coming back to this passage here on this podcast and crucial productions in general, because this, this is what we are constantly striving to do. Now, in the, in the last couple of years that we've been doing this podcast, we've tried to do this in a couple different ways, kind of, I guess, laying the foundation, if you will. So starting off with just explaining Here's how we see scripture through the lens of Christ. That was our first couple episodes. Mm -hmm. That was kind of the phrase we used, the lens of Christ, the lens of Jesus and reading scripture that way. And then we went into, we realized, you know what? It might be helpful to have a series on Christology. Okay, if we're going to say through the lens of Christ, probably be a good idea to talk about (laughs) who who Jesus Jesus, is. Yeah, who (laughs) is this Jesus that we keep talking about? And, you know, really spending some time digging deep into some deep theological stuff and some not so deep stuff as well, just kind of filling out who Jesus is. And then this next, the next series we did was on hermeneutics. Okay, well, we talk about a lens. What does that actually mean, this interpretive lens? And there's a lot of scary stuff that can uh, happen around hermeneutics if you're not familiar with it. And so we're like, well, in order to help people understand our approach and also understand who we are, but really first and foremost, to actually see Jesus in the Old Testament and oddly enough, the New Testament, because it's, mm-hmm. it's also really easy to go off on the second half of Philippians and say, this is all about me because uh, Paul is telling me how to live my life. So therefore, this is all about me. It's like, no, no, no. Even, even in those settings, it's still about Jesus and it's still worthwhile. So that's kind of the, the foundation we've laid, hoping to clarify for ourselves, okay, what is it that we're doing um, in this podcast, in Crucial Productions? Why do we exist? Helping those who are listening to kind of work through it themselves and to understand where we're coming from. I think it's very helpful for listeners as they're getting to know us to know where we're coming from. Um, Really, and this is where we want to go next year as we're, as we're, building on that foundation. I'm still trying to find a good metaphor for that. <laughs> we don't do video games, so it's not leveling right. up. That'd be silly. Um, I also don't know if it's leveling up because we're still like doing the mean. same sort of thing. That's, so that wouldn't really make sense either. Um, but as, as we're, we're moving into the next phase, if you will, is not leaving any of this behind. But the the next thing to begin talking about more is this isn't just how we look at scripture. This is not something we limit to, well, that's all good and well for the Bible and maybe for church on Sunday. But the other six days of the week, I'm living life and the rest of my life, and that's really a separate thing. No, actually, this this hermeneutic, and, and the reason I wanted to, I picked this verse w- was twofold. First of all, I knew, Kevin, if I picked John, you'd be like, yeah, let's do yeah, a podcast let's do, on John. Let's do John. <laughs> That'd be easy. Uh, second of all, Jesus himself says that he has the life that people are looking for. 
that life is actually in him. And he says this all over right. John, all over scripture. Jesus is very intentional about saying, there is no life outside of me. Right. Life is in me. And so that alone should indicate to us, hey, this hermeneutic that Jesus tells us, this is how to read scripture, that should be a pretty good indicator that this hermeneutic is also about life. Mm-hmm. It doesn't stop when you close the Bible. It actually continues on when you're looking at the world around you saying, we're teaching you to say, how do I see politics so, through Jesus? How do so I what see you family? Just, so what you just did is you made a giant leap. I did. From a theological concept of life to everyday life. And this is this is also something that we want to work through is that when Jesus is talking about life in the Gospel of John, he's not talking about eating dinner tomorrow. He's talking about life before God, mm-hmm. that you are going to live, not die, um, mm-hmm. literally because of your sins. Yep. You know, the wrath of God is poured out, but instead you're going to have life before God. And this, this drives us to even continue to, to think about what does Jesus say or what does Jesus mean when he says this is all about me? And what do we mean when we when we say it's all about Jesus? We don't actually just mean it's about Jesus as like a really great character in a story. Mm-hmm. You know, like you could say, oh, Star Wars is actually all about, you know, Anakin Skywalker and the redemption of Anakin or something like that. Right. You could make an argument. No, it's really about Luke. Careful, no, that could have really, been a spoiler for people really who about, haven't watched Star Wars. You might have just spoiled I made the whole the, thing There's something them. called Star Wars? I just made it <laughs> up in my head. I just picked two words and slammed picked, them together. That's right. Um, no, it's really about R2-D2. We all know that. <laughs> but, you know, you could make those kind of arguments from a literary point of view about the Bible as well. It's, he's the main character, really. That's mm-hmm. not really what we're saying. What we're saying is that it... Um, let me say it and then I'll explain it. What we're actually saying is that the, the, the scriptures are focused on the actual crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. Mm-hmm. It's not just... Because a lot of people say, yeah, I agree with you. It's all focused on Jesus. And Jesus was a really loving guy. Therefore, the most important thing is that we should be loving. Right. Or Jesus was a really revolutionary guy. So it's really important that we are always fighting against the established whatever. He was all about justice. He's all about justice. We should should. all be about justice. And we say, no, when we say it's about Christ, we actually mean his death and his resurrection. Mm -hmm. And obviously his incarnation, his ascension, his second coming are all part of that. But even in those things, the primary focus of Scripture is his actual death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. And so when we say this applies to all of life, what we see is that that concept that his death and resurrection wins life in the gospels, that could still kind of be kind of a spiritual idea. Like between me and God, there's this eternal life idea, Mm -hmm. maybe after death or maybe kind of a spiritual plane. I exist in this reality of eternity. But what does that have to do with today? I got to go to work, you know? Right. But listen to what Paul says. This is really interesting. So the Apostle Paul, learning this, right? Mm -hmm. Learning to read the Old Testament in light of Christ, learning what the gospel is by revelation from Jesus himself. This is what Paul says. He says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. Mm -hmm. And then listen to what he says. And the life I live in the body... So he's not talking about some ephemeral, eternal, Mm -hmm. up there with God life. No, he's saying the life I live in the body, life I live in the flesh, I live in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. See, Christ is our life now. Mm -hmm. Not just someday when he returns and we live forever in the sky. We're not talking about that. We're saying, I'm not even totally sure that's true, but you know, that, that kind of, but some people think that, that like all of this is now just Now I just nice. have spirit in the sky. Going right, now I got spirit head. in the sky. Like, oh, right? the theological problems but, with that. But the issue <laughs> is that what we're trying to, to be totally blunt, as, as believers in Jesus, what we're trying to learn is how to take every breath in Christ. Mm-hmm. And I mean that. Yeah. So that when I wake up in the morning, my life is in Christ every moment of every day because that's the will of God and as we've discussed before there will be a day speaking of spirit in the sky <laughs> when you will live live every single moment of every single day in light of Christ according to the will of God yeah and we call that bliss we call that heaven we call that paradise 
And part of the gospel is that you get that now. You're a baptized child of God, which means every breath you take is as a baptized child of God. Mm -hmm. It's because of what Christ has done on the cross. It's because of the empty tomb. It's because of his ascension. It's because of the promise of his return. And which means when we read God's word for us, that's going to form the center of our interpretation too. This is all because of Christ. This is all pointing us to Christ. So when, when we know that spiritually is pretty easy, we know that when we sin, <laughs> right, <laughs> we go to Jesus, right? Yep. Whoops, I messed up. I broke God's will. What do I do? I repent. I, I admit my sin before God. I confess it mm -hmm. before God and the world, if anybody cares, right? right. I messed up, right? Yep. I did not follow God's will. I followed mine instead. So what do I do? I repent and I come to the cross of Christ and I say, in your mercy, because of Jesus Christ, forgive me. And God always says, you're forgiven, right? That's the gospel. Yep. But that also means that when I, when I go through my daily life, I'm not totally sure what is sin and what isn't sometimes. I don't know. Yeah. It's really hard. To, <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's crippling to, to stop before every single decision and question whether it's a sin or not. I want cornflakes. Is that okay? You know, is corn okay? Is flaky well, corn okay? I don't actually like Has Kellogg's changed their right, logo is, to the gay pride logo for Kellogg, June? Right. Is now, you, can't eat, you can't eat corn flakes See, am in I June, supporting Kevin? some kind of evil empire by sure. eating breakfast cereal? And right? in our daily life, because of the culture around us, that question gets very hard very fast. Well, and, and we can joke about silly it. Silly stuff like that. But yeah. we can joke about it. But, but there have actually been times that I have not bought certain things or not sh shopped in certain stores because of what's on display or because yeah. of their latest support of some agenda. And I say, well, you know, I'd rather pay a little bit more over here mm -hmm. than save a couple bucks over there and support. So it's, it actually isn't that funny. It isn't that right. silly. There actually <laughs> did become a, a, a question of conscience and, and morality. And, and what we want to do is say, Lord, teach me to live according to your will in everything I do. Mm -hmm. Um, the mundane things as well as the important things. Just let me do everything according to the will of God. And and what we believe is that the New Testament says the way to know the will of God is to get to know Jesus. Now, I think one thing that is, hopefully, if we talk about this the way you and I do in conversations, I think that's perhaps the, the, the advantage, Kevin, that you and I have in this podcast is really only that a lot of the conversations we're going to have next year, these crucial conversations on the podcast, you and I have already had. Right. <laughs> and so well, the advantage we have is, well, we've talked through this to a certain extent with each other. Um, so uh, the people who are listening, you, you people, you, you might not have had these conversations before. Well, that doesn't mean that Kevin and I are actually smarter or better at this than you. It simply means we've talked through it, so maybe we've processed it a little bit more and we're just a little bit further down that road, but we have not completely figured it out. We still work in our own lives. This is why we have these conversations amongst ourselves is trying to figure this out. Right. But, but one of the things as we do this that I hope you listeners will hear us avoiding is simply creating a new list right. of things to do and not do. And what you just said, Kevin, about seeing it what was the phrase you seeing it through Christ? You just now you said particulars. I can't remember what they are now, but they, they were Go the important ones. Yeah. We rewind like th two minutes before I started talking and whatever phrase Kevin used. That's the distinction between making a new list of do's and don'ts. And because that, that's what that is. Blah, 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 blah. That mm -hmm. is our human tendency is, okay, so now this thing over here, eating cornflakes during gay pride month is bad. Right. But any other time, it's good. Right. No, that's not seeing or, things through Christ. Right. That's, that's not what we're saying at all. You might end up doing that. I mean, maybe that's right. what you decide for yourself or for your family is that's what you need to do. But we don't want to confuse this new list of do's and don'ts for actually seeing your life in Christ. So that's, that's a really interesting point. And... and um, I think a lot of us, as we encounter Christianity in different forms, as we get interested in the church and, and learning theology and, you know, maybe listening to things and most, most 
teachers do end up creating another list, right? Mm -hmm. So, oh, you, you, Christ catch, set you free from the law. Now, here are the things you have to do, <laughs> and which is just another law. And I, I think one of the things that that we talk through a lot as friends, and then also try to work through kind of theologically together is. It's not a list. As a matter of fact, a list gets really hard because... <laughs> or too easy. <laughs> is this sinful? Well, you kind of go, well, yeah. Or no. Well, that probably neither one is the full answer. Mm -hmm. the, the reality is I'm a sinner. So there's a pretty good chance that whatever my human nature comes up with is sinful, right? <laughs> yeah. At some point. <laughs> it's probably more focused on me than it is anybody else. Yep. So the, probably the reason I'm asking is because I... I'm pretty sure it's not what I'm supposed to be doing, but I want to get away with it somehow. And I want someone to tell me it's okay. Right. So instead of that conversation, what we want to recognize is that my old Adam in me, that's one way to talk about this in the New Testament, my old Adam, my sinful nature, my concupiscence, is always driving me to love myself. Mm -hmm. God has something better. It's his love. And that's incredible. Mm-hmm. His love ends in eternal life. Actually, it doesn't end. It just goes, right? It continues. <laughs> it continues. And that love is in Jesus Christ. It's his death. It's his resurrection. It's everything. And that's given to you freely. So now, I've got these two things going on in my life. I've got my will that ends in death. Mm -hmm. Not just for me, but for everybody that I infect with my selfishness, yep. right? Which is pretty much everybody I meet. <laughs> At the same time, I have the will of God that's been placed on me in baptism, that's placed on me weekly, daily in his word, that's placed in my mouth in the eating and drinking of his body and blood, right? Mm -hmm. I have that placed into me. And now I have the will of God in Christ Jesus. And so what does it mean then to see the whole reality of my being, of your being, of this entire creation in light of what God has done in Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? That affects everything. Yeah everything and it's not a list of being good or being bad it's actually being a person who lives in the reality of what jesus christ has done as the love of god mm -hmm. so now we live in the love of god and this is paul's whole view of life right yep now you've been baptized into christ see you're now in Christ and and this changes everything. So what does what does Jesus say here? He says because in me is life. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Now when you read the word of God, if you want to read it according to the will of God, you read it in Christ. Because the life that he came to give is in Christ. So this life-giving word, which the scriptures are, it's life in Christ. Mm -hmm. See Paul or Jesus whole point in John is that you're reading the right words but you're not reading them according to the will of God. Yeah. Because the will of God gets you to Jesus. And when, and when you're in Jesus, that's where there's the life of God. Right? So what does John say at the end of the John, the Gospel of John? He says, these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and by believing have life, life in his name. See? So this faith that we have in Jesus is given through the word, by the Holy Spirit working in the word. And obviously it moves us into Christ where we have life. And now the question is, it's not just whether or not my sins have been removed from me in forgiveness, but now how do I live? Mm. And that's what we're trying to get. And that's what you were saying, Peter, is we, yep. we want to get to that. Yes. And we're never going to stop running to the foot of the cross to receive forgiveness. That's, that's a daily reality for me. It's every second of every day, <laughs> right? I sin a lot. Um, this is why you don't get anything done at work, Kevin. Because right, I'm always, yeah, too I'm always much running repenting. to the foot of the cross. Right. <laughs> but this is why we go to church every Sunday. This is why we spend time in devotion is because this miraculous reality that God knows all of my sins and yet still calls me his beloved child. Mm -hmm. That makes no sense. Right. That's only accomplished in Jesus Christ, the one who is the son of God, who kept the law perfectly, who was totally pleasing to God and yet sacrificed himself on behalf of sinners. Mm-hmm. That's that's it. And so now that I now that I live, now that you live as a beloved child of God, you've been identified as his child in baptism. You've been called his child through the forgiveness of sins, the action of Christ. Mm -hmm. 
He's actually fed you with this, yep. right? You've tasted and seen the Lord is good. Yep, yep. So now how do I live? Yeah. How do I actually get up tomorrow morning and live in Christ? And mm. that's, see, that's kind of the fun stuff. That, that's the crucial conversation that we're going to continue next year that we want to have more of. It, that's why we titled this podcast Crucial Conversations. I mean, ultimately, to get us to kind of where we're, we're going to be going now is how do we do life? I hate that phrase, and yeah. I just used it. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully people understand what that means. Uh, so w- I, I guess just really quick, a couple examples last year, our, our critical theory episode, we just did a single one on that. That might be an example of what this looks like. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did a quick episode on um, what is church. And I th- we, we put out a video, at least on COVID, a really quick teaching on that. I don't think we've talked about that very extensively. We're not going to stop looking at scripture. Mm-hmm. Uh, we still want to do episodes like we did in our hermeneutic series. How do you take this passage and see Jesus in it? Um, read it through the lens of Christ. So we're, we're still going to do those sorts of things. We're not going to title any of these as part of a series at this point. We're kind of moving beyond, here's a set series, here's how it is. So that's going to be one of the, one of the differences. You won't see series. They might look more topical. So the episodes on different topics, and there might be multiple episodes on those different topics. But one thing we do want to hear from you guys who are listening, is there an area that you would like us to cover where, you, where you're saying, how do I see this in light of my life in Christ? How do I handle this, whether it's a big idea, whether it's uh, what I don't even want to limit it by right. suggesting different things, but um, let us know because maybe that's something that we can talk about. We can have this crucial conversation. If you know people who'd be good guests for having these kinds of conversations, we're going to be doing that more in the new year. Uh, pastor Beerman is the interim pastor at my church right now, and we're going to have him on sometime in January to talk about his process for Bible studies and sermons, because what I've appreciated so much about him on the last few months is just his Christological focus, how he kind of does a lot of the things that we talk about here on this podcast. And so as I'm listening to him preach, I'm listening to him teach, I'm like, hey, I've heard that before. That's kind of what we're talking about. Here's another guy who neither of us really know. We don't, I I mean, I interact with him more now because Mm -hmm. he's my pastor, but before this, I didn't interact with him at all. And yet, He's saying some of the same kinds of things. It's like, okay, how do you do that? How mm-hmm. do you get there? And we want to have that conversation with him of how does he do this? Because he's doing what we what we talk about, like completely separate from us. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. You you maybe yeah. said hi to him twice or this something. Isn't, this isn't know. our truth. No, this, it's, is... this isn't our thing. It's like, oh, that guy's doing it. So uh, we want to do more stuff like that. So we'd love to hear suggestions from you guys. Questions at crucialproductions.org is the email website, email address. This email website, what in the that world is, is that? I think we're getting to the end of the episode, I Kevin, because so. I can't talk. Anything you want to add to that? Nope. Thank you to everybody who's listened and, you know, um, keep in touch. And and the most the most important thing that, that we're trying to do in any of this is is to drive people to Christ. And, and he is found... Find a local congregation. Get involved in your local congregation. Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod congregations are the best congregations there are. Um, I haven't found a better one yet. That's right. That's where we go. <laughs> um, so you can look that up on our website at lcms.org. You can search for a local congregation um, and go there, talk to the pastor, get involved in Sunday worship, get involved in a Bible study. Uh, we have Bible studies online sometimes through Crucial. You can join those too. So, yep. But be in the Word. Um, it's the most important that you can do and, and it's the end of the year so I know New Year's resolutions come up and those kinds of things it's never wrong to resolve to read the Bible and, and to, <laughs> yep. to learn how to see Christ in every page of this sacred text that God has given us yep and if this gets out before Christmas because we're in the week of Christmas now if you're listening to this because we got it out before Christmas you get to go to church three days yeah, in a row best. this weekend Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Go go all of those days. Yep. That's If we're talking about living a life centered around Christ, in Christ, going to church and hearing God's word and receiving 
the gift of his body and blood, uh, forgiveness of sins. I mean, that's one of the best ways you can do that. Yep. <laughs> Once again, Pastor Bierman said that this Sunday yeah, too. He yeah. was like, hey guys, you yeah, get to go to church three, three times, times this weekend. Let's do this. This is great. Um, so that's all we got for today, for this year. That's we'll right. See you guys next year. Yes. See ya. See ya.